And welcome back, one and all. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, iHeart Radio, Simul Radio, Simul TV, and of course, on the Exxon Broadcast Network. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com and on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. You know, I've been doing this show now. It'll be 29 years come the month of uh, February. I'm sorry, January on the 18th. And over the years, I've talked to over 4,800 individual people. One of the most honest, downworth people that I've had the opportunity of talking to and, and calling a friend after all the years that I've known him is Bill Bean, and he is our guest this hour. Bill is a world-renowned spiritual warfare and deliverance minister, exorcist, and is known as the Spiritual Warrior. He is also an internationally known author, lecturer, and paranormal supernatural expert. Uh, Bill is currently being featured on TLC's A Haunting series, as well as the Lifetime Movie Network series, I Was Possessed. His website, www.billjbean.com. And Bill, it is always a pleasure having you back on the show, my friend. It's my honor and pleasure, Rob. It's always great to be on with you. It's been way too long. It has been, Bill. Uh, but before we go any further, how are the family members doing? Great. Everybody's great. I had, uh, and I'll tell you, God worked another healing miracle for me. I had a little thing, um, uh, I guess, uh, about a month or so ago, mm-hmm. uh, to where I had a little spot on my back that was bleeding. I noticed when I was getting out of the shower, toweling off, I noticed this blood. Right. I had to get it checked out. It turned out to be like uh, basal cell skin cancer on my back. Oh, gosh. And um, I was down for a couple of weeks, Rob. I had a major deal there. I had like 31 stitches and staples Ooh, back God there. God bless you. And and God healed me very, very quickly. I was down for about two weeks, and uh, after that, got right back up and right back to work, traveling, helping people, working out again. So uh, just amazing. It really is miraculous. So I'm very, very thankful uh, that I was healed so quickly that I could go back to helping people. Well, we're glad you're where you are. And, uh, you know, for all the people who do not have the opportunity that I have to to talk to you one-on-one. I'd like to thank you for all the wonderful work that you've done over the years. Thank you, my brother, and congratulations. Uh, wow, you've been on for a long, long time, and uh, certainly there will be many more to come, and just amazing, nearly 5,000 people that you've interviewed in your career. Yeah. That's uh, that's a very impressive number. Well, it, it is, and I've got, the, I've got people like you and the members of the Exxon Nation to thank for that, because without great guests like you and, and good friends like you, Bill, as, as well as the listeners of the audience, I wouldn't be here. I feel I'm on, as much as you're on a mission from God, I believe I am as well. Because, Bill, I'm going to share a dream with you, and I don't think I've ever shared this dream with you, that, that I met the good Lord in a dream. And he tells me that I, my tongue, my tongue is his sword and my heart is his shield. I love that. Yeah. And I believe that. And so we see confirmation of that through all of these years and all of these guests that you've interviewed. So praise God. So yeah. God very much has put a calling on your life, and you certainly are on a mission just as I am. Bill, let me ask you this as, as a man of the faith. Why is there so much dissension with God or about God these days? I heard something very, very, very disturbing the other day where uh, a member of the clergy who teaches uh, psychology at, at a university said that, you know, God basically took advantage of, of the Virgin Mary. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to tell you right now, brother, and I don't say this lightly, we are in a time like no other. Uh, this absolutely is Sodom and Gomorrah come again, yeah. but I think it's even worse. And people are just doing and saying some of the most bizarre things. And I have to say this, Rob. In my opinion, it's my belief that all life operates on frequency and vibration. So not just human beings, uh, all life Mm -hmm. operates on frequency and vibration. So when our frequency and vibration is on high, life is good, life is positive, we're moving forward, things are quote-unquote normal. 
Uh, but when we're on low, mm-hmm. life sucks. There's always a problem. There's right. always an issue. There's always a set of challenges, like the black cloud is over someone's head. And there's never an answer. It just uh, magnifies and amplifies and multiplies. I truly believe, whether it be through CERN or whatever devices are out there, that that those in the black ops and in the shadows possess, uh, whatever it may be, I truly feel that there is a strong signal being pumped out there into our atmosphere, which is coming down and affecting human behavior in certain individuals, because we just see some of the most bizarre things now, and you just have to shake your head and scratch your head, and it's almost like some of these people have just been uh, taken over or they're under a spell or something. So that's my best guess, is that there is some sort of frequency weapon being pumped out there that is affecting some of this human behavior. I bought, you know, like I was talking to a guest uh, a couple of months ago, and they and we were talking about human behavior, and uh, I, I said to this person who was a very well known psychiatrist at Harvard, I said, "Has anyone done a study as to the parallel between the change in the human psyche and the increase of crime, as well as negativity that is in the world, and the, have they compared it to the growth of the cellular?" Uh, cell industry, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. and he said no. Well, you're on to something there, yeah. brother, and it's it's astounding. Uh, it's almost like people are just certain people are turning a blind eye. And you know, I say in my new book that uh, I, I propose this hypothesis, hypothesis that mm-hmm. uh, you know, what if. Uh, we were taken over, or what would take place, and how would the devil go about taking over the world, and what would he do? And um, and I think we're living it right now. I truly do. I think, for whatever reasons, I think God's allowing the devil this short time to have his way, and the devil is trying to recreate the world in his image, after his likeness, after his kind. And this, in my opinion, is the not only the great deception, right. but the ultimate test of faith. And this is why it is so imperative for people to really seek out their close connection with God. Don't take my word for it. And I'm not trying to preach a sermon. I'm just telling the truth. Now is the time uh, for you to seek out your close connection mm-hmm. with God. And the church starts from within. That connection starts from within. You do not need an interceder. It is a very personal relationship that you can have with God, and I really can't stress it enough that now is the time to develop such a relationship. Last night, my wife and I were watching the news as she dropped by the station to bring me my uh, my supper, and there was a feature from Montreal where there's this display of different um, nativity scenes, and one mm. nativity scene is of Mary and Joseph dressed in... 20th century garb. Joseph has a man bun in his head, and Mary is taking a selfie of herself. The three wise men are, you know, it, it's it's just sacrilegious in my opinion. Absolutely, and anything that can be done now in a sacrilegious, uh, disrespectful manner, mm. it, it's a total mock of God. That's what it really is, Rob. And so anything that could be done in that manner now is being done. And I think, I'm trying to think of where it was, it just took place, I want to say Illinois, Chicago, um, where they put up, they, they had the nativity scene there in that courthouse or something, and now the uh, satanic church has put up uh, that foul-looking thing there on display, and they've allowed it, and it's right in there alongside of oh, the nativity no. scene. And and this is just, uh, this is a total mock of yeah. God. And I'll tell you, we really need to, need to get it together as a society to say enough of this. All right, Bill, my man, you and I have to take our first break. Please stand by. And Exxon Nation, if you'd like to find out more about our very special guest this hour, a good friend of the Exxon and a good friend of mine, Bill Bean. His website is www.billjbean.com. Dot com, and we'll be back on the other side of this break. 
As we continue investigating the role of the paranormal, the science of parapsychology, right here from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Exxon Radio TV show. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. Bill Bean is our special guest, www.billjbean.com. And, Bill, before we get on to the many new things that you have done since you and I last spoke, I had a member of the clergy on many years ago who said, you know what, Rob? 666 is not the mark of the devil anymore. It's www. Yeah, I've heard it as well, Rob, and I've studied about it, and it wouldn't surprise me a bit. Uh, I will say this. I think that uh, it's really incorporated into our society, just like Monster Energy Drink with the Hebrew Vavs. You know, that's 666, and, and people don't get this. They don't understand it. It's really everywhere. It's it's on a lot of clothing and uh, a lot of corporate logos mm-hmm. and things of that nature. And, you know, when you say these things, some people uh, will pause and, and go and do some research, but a lot of people won't. They won't even consider it because it, they feel like it's an infringement on their good time and, and on their way of life. So don't you dare tell me that I can't wear that shirt or I shouldn't wear that shirt or, yeah, exactly. or have that drink or whatever it may be. And I'm not out to spoil anybody's good time, but if you want truth, I've got truth for you and I can give it to you. And I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what I don't do and what I won't do. Well, Bill, you're, you're a very busy man. What have you been up to since you and I last talked? Oh, wow. Well, I've written two books in the year of 2018. I can't my believe gosh. that. I just, uh, you know, this is my fifth book now. And uh, when God puts an urging on my spirit, Rob, I just have to obey that. And when I feel that he's telling me I need to sit down and write, that's exactly what I do. Uh, I am, again, very thankful that I was able to write both of these books in a relatively short amount of time. And in this uh, current book, which is called Stranger Than Fiction, I actually brought in uh, some people that I know to give me some accounts of their stories. So so this just wasn't Bill Bean's perspective on all these different topics. Uh, I brought in some others who have had some expertise or first-hand experience with uh, some of these different types of phenomena. And truly, this book, Stranger Than Fiction, is all about connecting the dots. And I feel that God has worked through me in that way to be able to bring it all together. I've had experiences in all these areas that I'm talking about in this book, and then some. So I felt that it was time for the reader to understand that all these things are very much connected. And, Mm -hmm. Rob, here's a a quote, and I'll be very brief on this because I know we have limited uh, time, but I I want the listeners to understand this. This is a quote from the book, and I say, here's a question for you. If you were part of an invading force from outside of the earth that wanted to take over, how would you do it? I could tell you how I think the devil would do it. I think the devil and his minions would use technology to captivate and distract humans. They would also use devices such as CERN and HARP to open portals to control the atmosphere. They would change and alter names, times, sayings, spellings, Bible, scriptures, writings, and other things as well. And President Ronald Reagan said this during a speech that he was giving to the U.N. on September 21st, 1987. Uh, I quote him here saying, I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside of this world. And yet I ask you, is not such an alien force already among us? It is. Now, that's pretty sobering, Rob. To, you know, for, He was on to something there, and he knew something then, and we have progressed so much further since then. And I think this presence 
of this uh, external outside force has really increased as well. You know, I think the external force that people were thinking of were extraterrestrials, but I really think that what the good president was talking about was the 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 um, the devil satan the mm -hmm. and and the plight and the negativity the war the hate the terror that that he's putting on the planet right now and yet yeah. no one people would rather say well it's an alien instead of saying hey it's the devil yeah it's just mind boggling it really is so the the devil is very clever in manipulation so he is all about uh, divide and conquer. He's mm -hmm. all about bully tactics. He's all about deceiving and manipulating. So through this deception, the masses are manipulated. And like you said, a lot wouldn't even consider for one second that this comes down to um, God versus the devil and good yeah. versus evil. Um, they would consider to say, oh, well, it's just, uh, you know, it's aliens coming in or whatever. They, their minds just can't seem to go there. And I feel that that is part of social engineering that is taking place. Uh, you know, just look at all of these uh, movies and TV shows and, and the music now and the commercials mm -hmm. and all that. This is all mind programming. Yeah. But you know what, Bill? I just thought of something. The reason why people don't want to say it's the devil, because if they say it's the devil, then what they're doing is admitting there's a God. And how many yeah. people in today's society really want to admit that God exists? Not very many. I'm sorry to say I am really, really um, concerned about the younger generation, mm. especially Rob. So am I. It's as if they have been taken over, and there's nothing that you can do or say to get through to them, and uh, it, it's like they are just coming from somewhere else. This must keep the angels very busy these days. No question about it, because in my opinion, I feel that God assigns angels to each and every one of us from birth. Mm -hmm. But I think that the devil also assigns demons to each and every person as well. So it's this constant back and forth of good versus evil. And uh, so many people, and this is why I'm so busy now. I'm far more busy than uh, I was the last time I was on your show, and I was busy then. Um, so many people are under demonic attack now in so many different ways that uh, it's just head-scratching. It really is. Uh, but I understand it, and I understand why. Because, again, God is allowing this as part of the ultimate test of faith, the great deception, and even the very elect who are, a lot of these churches nowadays, are deceived. Would you say that we're now in the time, of the end times, as talked about in the book of Revelation? Without God, I'll say this, God himself has not told me this, but I have to say, based on what is taking place now, I would have to believe that we are in such a time, because uh, it's just amazing, you know, if we look back just a few years ago, right. the things that are happening now, you know, versus what was taking place then, it just seems to be leaps and bounds more in a negative way than it was even a few years ago. So we are rapidly approaching, in my opinion, a great and terrible day. And this is why, not only as a warrior for God, I'm a watchman for God also. And as a watchman for God and a messenger for God, I'm urging people to please consider making your connection with God and developing your personal relationship with Him, because it is only God and only by the power of God that we are going to get through these things that are coming. You know, I, I look at what's going on in the world, Bill, and another example of of how I feel that, you know, the Church and the true meaning of Christ, as well as, you know, as as everything that God and Christ stand for, is being mocked by the church itself was, I believe it was a church in in Boston that had a nativity scene, and they put the they put Christ inside a dog cage, and this was their way of protesting the 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 um, the handling of of immigrants on the southern border. You know, like this it's is incredible. it is. It's my and what's even more alarming, Rob, is that. 
in life, and this is in every person's life, there is an order to all things. Mm-hmm. So that starts with God, then Jesus, right. then the Holy Spirit, and then man. Um, and the order is totally just in shambles now, because nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, but a lot of people are not making God first. They don't have a relationship with God or Christ. They are totally immersed in themselves, and that's exactly what the devil wants. He is the uh, master manipulator and the ultimate egomaniac to where he wants it uh, to be all about you. And so people have this through all these gadgets. You know, I feel the more technologically advanced we become, the worse off we are as a people. No, I agree. And, and so through this type of technology, you have people that I, I've heard these stories before, people in the same home sitting mm-hmm. on the same, like, sofa, one on the one end and the other on the other end, and instead of talking to, to each other, they're texting each other. It's pathetic, Bill. It's pathetic. Yeah, and so this is where we are. This is where we're headed. So it's a total breakdown. of It's lawlessness. It really is. So nobody wants to follow the order of God. So therefore, they are following the devil and one of the devil's favorite sons, Aleister Crowley, who preached, do what thou will is the whole of the law. And that's what they are following. And furthermore, you have these people like this Jay-Z and all these characters that are wearing those shirts that say do what thou will and these young people are following right along in that but they really do not understand the consequences of their actions bill and this is where people like you come in my friend so please stand by we've got to take our news break at the bottom of the hour and dexo nation our guest this hour is bill bean his website is www.billjbean.com and we'll both be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Explanation, uh, Bill Bean is our guest, www.billjbean.com is his website. And Bill, as a paranormal uh, and supernatural expert, the, the negativity in the world today, is that increasing the amount of paranormal activity that we are experiencing as well as the, the increase in demonic, uh, uh, demonic cases that, that you and other investigators uh, come across? By leaps and bounds, my brother, I'm sorry to say, by leaps and bounds. And the reason for this, I, again, believe strongly that the CERN device and devices like that, they're stargates. And I believe that they're opening portals. And I believe that more and more demons and other creatures are being loosed on this earth. I truly believe it 100%. There are so many people Mm -hmm. that are coming under this. It's just mind-boggling. I... uh, I sent something, I don't know if you received it or not, I sent it to Stephanie about an hour and a half ago. And this was about an account that um, I had, a a case that I had on November 18th, and it was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you got that information. No, I I didn't, Bill. Okay. Um, This family, I've been to them before, and they're wonderful people, the Intenso family in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They, uh, They were actually featured in one of the haunting episodes with me, the episode's called Portal of Doom. And these are good, hardworking, everyday people. Yeah. Uh, Anita Intenzo and her son, Chris. Uh, very educated people. They're good and productive people. And yet they have had these uh, experiences over and over and over again. So I went there 
I've been there in the past, and God worked through me to get rid of all the demonic garbage. And I mean, reptilian stuff was happening and really? everything. I mean, there there was like a reptilian handprint uh, with the finger things and everything on the on one of the mirrors in the home. This is uh, probably five years ago, and um, so everything was good for a while after I went and and God worked through me to help them. Right. But uh, then they started having some recent problems uh, of a very serious nature to where somehow these demonic forces had come back in. And I normally don't do this. When I go to someone's home, the first thing that I do is I pray outside. I say a land blessing, and I ask God, Yahweh, to send his giant warrior angels to come in and camp around the property and the home and the family and pets if they have pets. And uh, then I go inside, and I anoint everybody's head, and I say several prayers at the front door, and then I sit down, and I have to become a counselor, and and I talk. But on this occasion, since I already knew uh, Anita and Chris well, I mean, they've become like family to me. I love them dearly. Uh, I got there, and I could, as I got out of my truck walking up the walkway, I could feel the presence of evil. Once uh, once Chris opened the door and I came in, I could really feel it strongly then. And so I did something that I normally don't do on these cases. I felt this in my spirit. Uh, I said to Chris, I said, I want you to walk behind me and just take random photographs behind me as I'm binding and casting out and getting this garbage out of here. So that's what he did. And uh, he took many, many photographs, too, looked to be angelic, divine, that there were, and again, I have no doubt that there were angels present, because I called on those angels by the mighty power of God in Jesus' name. And uh, so he did get a couple photographs that, that looked divine, that, that it was angelic, but there were some other photographs that he took, uh, especially down in the basement area. And when we got down into the basement, I was drawn right over to uh, this, uh, it was like a chimney fireplace type thing, and it had like a pot belly stove coming out from it. And uh, it was a block wall, and I was drawn right over to there. And so I stood there, I felt that there was a portal there. Right. And I said, by the mighty power of Yahweh and his mighty and holy name in Jesus' name, I bind and rebuke any demons that may be in this wall, and I close this portal, and I command you to depart. And as I said that, Rob, this loud, I don't know if it was a growl or a groan or a little of both, but it was very clear. It came out from that block wall, uh, Anita and her son. At that point, Chris was standing to my right. His mother uh, was standing to his right. And... We clearly heard it, and I felt it depart after that. And again, I closed up the portal by the mighty power of God in Jesus' name. Then I continued to move through that entire basement. Now, another interesting side note to this is Anita has just tons and tons of objects down there in that basement. Her um our friend was an anthropologist, and she had suddenly died, and then she became the executor to his will, and her son had to go and clear out the home, and she brought a lot of those artifacts in and stored them in her basement. Now, he collected these artifacts from all over the world, and I believe that some of these objects were cursed objects and still are cursed objects. I mean, I have uh, some of these things they presented to me, and I have done a, a binding and a rebuking and casting out on objects that I thought demons had a hold of. Right. And so there's a lot to this story, but boy, oh boy, uh, once you see that and you see some of these pictures, I sent you one picture, uh, one picture in particular, and this um, demonic face, it, it is one of the, out of all the photographs that I've seen, and I've taken many photographs as well of paranormal supernatural phenomena, including UFOs, and this is one of the most clear photographs of what I believe a demonic entity that I've ever seen in my life. And um, so I did send that to you, and you will see it when you do. If you want to put it up on your site, wherever you want to do with it, feel free. All right, I thank you for um, that. It's uh, it's it's really when you take a look at it, Rob, you will you'll be alarmed. That's for sure. Bill, you mentioned UFOs. Is there a connection between UFOs and and, and Satan? 
Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's all very much connected. As a matter of fact, here's something that people miss. Uh, UFOs are actually connected to God first because the chariots of God, of Yahweh, are 20,000. So UFOs are mentioned at least 70 times in the Bible as clouds, pillars of a cloud, flying right. tabernacles, scrolls, you, you name it. They're mentioned it there. And, and why does our God, who created everything, have a need for such a vehicle? I don't know. We would have to ask him, but I do believe that our God does use such a vehicle and has our heavenly host use those vehicles. And I also believe that when Satan and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven, they were cast out, those flying craft, and they came down here to the earth. They took human women, and they had sex with them and produced a hybrid offspring of giants called the Nephilim. And then the Nephilim went in uh, to the... Uh, into the woods and, and into the forest and had unnatural sex acts with beasts of the field, which produced another hybrid offspring of creatures that are called Sasquatch and Bigfoot. Hmm. This is all very much connected. You know, I had Lloyd Pye on Rest His Soul many years ago. And before Lloyd was known as the, the, the keeper of the uh, Star Child, he was a UF, uh, not a UFO, but a Bigfoot expert. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the very first shows I did way back when. He was telling me that in Russia and in the mines in Russia, they would have Bigfoot. And the Russian miners would have sex with the Bigfoot. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So. Can you imagine, Rob? You know, unfortunately, Bill, I can. That's the sad part. I can, under, yeah. you know, I can believe it. But why are? I believe it too. But why? Why is the? Why is the world not adding one and one and getting two these days? We've got angels. We've got demons. We've got ghosts. We've got increase in UFO sightings. We've got increase in, in Bigfoot sightings. Yes, all over the world. Uh, it is because, in my opinion, yeah. it's because the world is distracted. So the devil has brought upon the masses this adulation with self. It's all about self. Uh, the selfies, and it's all about, you know, uh, the person being number one. You've got, and then, you know, there, sometimes there's a new age philosophy that goes with that is that you have to uh, make yourself first and you have to love yourself and follow your heart. Now, look, yes, we do have to love ourselves, but not mm -hmm. to the point to where we become narcissists and we don't care about anybody else except for ourselves. That is wrong, and that is of right. the devil, and that's where you know the devil pumps that ego up, and that's a very dangerous area there. So there's a fine line to all things in life, and if we could somehow navigate through on that center line and not stray too far to the left or to the right, just stay on that center path towards God, we'll be okay. But it's very easy to veer off a little bit, and when that happens, boy, oh boy, uh, you know, can we ever get into trouble? What's the title of your new book, Bill, and where can listeners get a copy? It's called Stranger Than Fiction, mm -hmm. and it truly is. Uh, and for anybody out there who's interested in getting a copy, I mean, you can either go to Amazon.com or you can uh, visit my website, BillJB.com, and you can get a signed copy. Uh, I'll sign it personally and send it out personally to you. So whatever your preference is, uh, again, BillJBean.com or Amazon.com and, and get your copy. I highly recommend it. The reviews are incredible. Um, everybody that has read it so far, and I sent you a PDF as well, so I hope that you'll read it. And I want to send you an actual copy. Uh, I want to get a mailing address from you so I can send an actual copy to you. I'll send but, one to uh, you, Bill. And I listen, the reason I asked you that is because Christmas is coming. It is, mm -hmm. It's a special holiday. It's the birth of Christ that we all celebrate. And uh, anything that you write, Bill, is a blessing. Bill Bean and I will be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away.
Welcome back, everyone. Bill Bean is my special guest. His website is BillJBean.com. And, uh, Bill, it's always great having you with us. But before we go on, I'd like to take the opportunity of, of thanking you for a number of things, my friend. Thank you for all the work and the lives that you've helped around the world. I'd like to thank you for coming on the show, and I'd like to thank you for being a friend. And I appreciate that. I really do. And praise God. And I thank you just the same for everything that you're doing because you're doing very important work as well. And you're reaching people all over the world as well. And so God has us on a very similar path, just uh, working at it in a little yeah. different way. But boy, oh boy, uh, you're on a mission and a journey as well. And congratulations to you. Happy anniversary again with your uh, anniversary coming up of, of being on the air. And God bless you and your family. And Merry Christmas. And may 2019 be a fantastic year for you and for your family. Well, you know what? I, I wish people a Merry Christmas. And I wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. And, and you know what? It's very sad. It's very sad to hear lawmakers saying, well, you really can't say Merry Christmas anymore because it's not politically correct. Well, this is my solution to political correctness. If you're not happy and you come over to Canada, I can't speak for my fellow American, my good friends, but if you come over to Canada where we say Merry Christmas and you don't like it, there's a simple solution. Where the plane landed, it also takes off from. And as you're taking off, going back to wherever you come from where they don't say Merry Christmas, and you look down at the end of the runway and you see somebody waving bye-bye, that's going to be me. I totally agree. I'm in total agreement yeah. with you. And look, I love all people. I've helped so all I. people from different backgrounds. But this mm -hmm. political correctness yeah. is part of the problem. This is part of the agenda. And the devil is behind this, make no mistake, because this is part of isolation tactics. So this is divide and conquer tactics. Mm -hmm. And if you can get the people warring with each other from That's within right. and the masses are at odds, well, then you have weakened them to the point to where they're ready to be taken over. Bill, tell me about your opinion on the growing New Age movement. Yeah, and again, look, I love all people, and, and I don't want to criticize anybody, but, you know, the, uh, some of the New Agers will call the uh, the third eye, you know, they'll talk about the third pineal eye, gland, and you yeah. always hear that, the third eye. Well, actually, what that is, that's the pineal gland. And most people don't realize this. It's, it's the pineal gland, and it is the receiver and sender this to me is the antenna of a person to where this is all about communication with god getting messages from god and sending messages mm -hmm. and so there's a concerted effort now to calcify that and it's all and whether that is through food products or whatever it may be uh could also be through these frequencies and vibrations that are being pumped out um the agenda is to really cover that over, calcify it, distort it to where it is distorting the connection between God and that person. And also, Rob, when people are exposed to high levels of trauma, and whether that comes through child molestation or rapes or murders or some type of violent, you know, act, wicked, heinous act. <laughs> secretions will come from the pineal gland and the adrenal glands. And I'm sure you've heard about this. Uh, this is the supposedly the most powerful drug on the black market. It's called adrenochrome. And this drug comes from the secretions, that, again, that come out of the pineal gland and the adrenal glands. Now, the drug, it, how, is it, it must be artificially manufactured. Yes. Okay. And Boy, next time you have me back on the show, we'll get into that a little bit. And it's very disturbing, and I don't like talking about disturbing things like that, but it's true nonetheless. And I feel that as part of these horrific um, uh, things that are taking place with these uh, these rings, these child pornography oh, rings, God, yes. and these um, the the, uh, the enslavement rings that uh, you know the pedophile rings mm -hmm. and all this stuff that's taking place around the world. I have reason to believe that some of these children are being killed and they're being pushed to the absolute limits of 
uh, high stress and and just panic mode to where um, when you were pushing someone to that limit, these secretions will come out and they will kill that child or person and then harvest uh, those secretions and, and get them out on the black market. I know it sounds awful and I hate to it even does. talk about it, but it's I believe it's true. Bill, as, as a man of the faith, how do we deal with the pedophilia in the world if we can't deal with the pedophilia within organized religion? Well, I'm going to say this to you, and I am a man of God, and I love everybody, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for anybody. However, there has to be a point mm -hmm. to where if you're going to have a civilized society, and this goes worldwide, if you are going to have a civilized society, then you have to have law and order. Right. And my measures that I would personally take if I were the guy in charge would not be good for these perpetrators. They would suddenly know all about how it would feel to become a victim, and then they would be departing this earth. There are, there's no place for people like this in our society and on our earth. And I'm sorry to say this, and I know that God is the judge. However, I feel that God wants us to stand up and stay firm in our faith and dedicated to the order of things in life. And if we allow this lawlessness to continue, a takeover is going to come sooner than later. In your opinion, is a Catholic Church, the Vatican, too strong? Oh, boy, you must have been reading my mind, because, uh, and, and look, it's nothing against the Catholic Church. I say uh, mm -hmm. lots of people in many different religious backgrounds are in error. But there's a headline here a friend just sent to me. Uh, Pope Francis implementing change of the Lord's Prayer. And so he wants to oh. change that from, uh, you know, lead us not into temptation. Yes. Uh, now he wants to change it to abandon us not into temptation. Who is this guy? Who does he think he is? And and I'll tell you, um, if you do a lot of study into him and some other so-called religious leaders on this planet, uh, I think your eyes will get big as saucers. And, and these people whether they have sold out for personal reasons or they were made a deal that they couldn't refuse. Right. I don't know, but I do know that something is taking place here, and these people are doing and saying some things that are way off. Now, I'm going to say this as well, and I've got to be delicate in how I say this. There is a very prominent, and I'll send you the information, Rob. I'll email this to you sure. when you email me. Okay. There's a prominent pastor, one of the most known pastors probably in the world, and and his dad was the most famous of them all, and he's mm -hmm. gone now. And and this man was recently photographed and, and took selfies and stood under the sign at a known pedophile place that is rumored to be a part of the, this Pizzagate sex ring kind of stuff and all this, and there he was right there at this place taking pictures and say killer donuts and all this kind of stuff. I'm going to tell you now, the only way that I would ever be at such a place is if I were coming there as a spiritual warrior to bind and rebuke and cast out all the demons that are drawn mm -hmm. to places like that by the wicked and heinous acts that are occurring there. And so don't take my word for this, but if you were to find out and read this for yourself and see you know, who this person is, you'd have to say, why in the world would this person who claims to be you know, one of the big spiritual leaders uh, on the earth, and he is at such a place as this and enjoying it and taking pictures, uh, it's mind-boggling. I'll look forward to receiving that in the, in the email, Bill. And, uh, but there is something I'd like to ask you. We've got about a minute and a half left here. Why is the church gathering all of these prized possessions? For example, does the Pope really need Vatican City? If, you know, here you had Jesus Christ walking along the shore of Galilee, being followed by people. He was giving, he was giving sermons outside. He wasn't giving them in a church. So, what gives the Pope and and all the other large, uh, different denominations who believe in Christ and God, the 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 right to collect all these riches while their parishioners are so poor? 
because that's where the ego comes in. Boy, I am somebody, and I'm one of the most known people on the earth, and I deserve all this, and I want more and more, and they can never satisfy their lust and their thirst for these earthly riches, and they have forsaken God. They don't even realize it, because now, at this point, it's all about self. And for anybody who thinks I'm talking crazy talk, just study some of these people, and you'll come to the same conclusions. I mean, Jesus said you'll know them by their fruits, yep. and their fruit is rotten. Well, Bill, as always that, as as it always happens, time with you, my friend, goes by way too fast. I'd like to take the opportunity again to thank you for being on the show and all the great work that you do. Thank you for your friendship, and to you and your lovely family, a very Merry Christmas, and nothing but the very best in the new year. And for you as well, my brother. A Merry Christmas to everybody out there, and then God bless all of you. All right, Exxon Nation, if you'd like to find out more about my good friend, the one and only Bill Bean, his website is www.billjbean.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, where, you know what, I say, my friends say, and people who believe in Christ say, Merry Christmas. We'll be back. Don't go away. 